Jerry Darkus here, uh, spending the day down at Mad River Outfitters in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I've worked with the folks down here for many years, uh, guiding for them, uh, sales rep uh, for a bunch of companies with them, and I'm currently helping out with the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools. So uh, when you get a chance, uh, give those a look, please. Uh, but today, I'm gonna tie a, a fun, simple fly that I've been doing for a number of years. Uh, very effective fly, quick and easy to tie, catches fish, that's the main thing. Uh, I call it the sandwich beetle. And I call it the sandwich beetle because what I do is I glue, glue two pieces of one and a half to two millimeter foam together, cut it into slices, and then cut those slices into smaller pieces. And we'll see the way everything works together here in just a minute. So this is a dry fly, and I'm gonna start off with a, a number 14 Daiichi 1310 wide gap hook. Uh, I like it because it's got a little shorter shank for size, but a nice wide gap, which gives a good hooking and also makes it easy to get the fly out. Uh, you could also use a light wire scud hook that has a, a nice wide gap on it also to tie the fly, but this is the one I normally use. So the first step we're gonna do is just cover the hook shank normally with thread. Give a good base of thread there. And we'll get that going. And just before we uh, really start tying, give you a little look at, at what we end up with here. So I have a, uh, a piece of foam here, bright color on the top, black on the bottom. Uh, for beetles, ants and such, normally with darker bodies, again, we're gonna put the dark color on the bottom but make it visible on the water and easy to see, we've got the nice bright color on top, okay? So that's one of the key things about this. So it's visible on the water, but really has that nice uh, beetle or ant looking profile in the water. So we're gonna lay a little base of dubbing here just to help uh, tie this body on when we, when we get to that point. And uh, we can use either a, any standard dry fly dubbing will work, you know, any of the poly, uh, or synthetic materials, the natural furs. Uh, I've got actually uh, uh, a fur dubbing here we can use, or I'll also use uh, ice dub at times, you know, like the black peacock color. Just something that, you know, gives a nice looking base for the body and we'll tie the foam on top of it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of dubbing. Don't need a whole lot. And I'm just gonna spin a little bit of that on the hook. And you remember with dubbing, you can always add more. Hard to take it off, so just do a little bit at a time. After you do a few of these, you get a feel for how much you need. The other thing when you're putting dubbing on too is to make sure that you always go in the same direction, okay? Finger pressure in the same direction. So I got a nice little noodle of dubbing on there. Slide that up a touch. And I'm gonna just wrap the thread up, start to lay a little bit of a body there. And this is really nothing that's too, uh, uh, too size, uh, you know, critical or anything, cause we just wanna get some of this uh, on the hook. And we'll show you what's going on here with the whole thing very, very soon. So I just added a little more dubbing there. Going to go back up, end up right about in the middle of the hook there, okay? Follow me? So what I've done is I've already prepared the foam. I've glued the two pieces together using a spray adhesive. Then I've just taken like an X-Acto knife and I've cut a strip uh, just about an eighth of an inch wide. And that's what I use mostly for these size 14 hooks. That's kind of my favorite hook size with this for trout. So I've cut the strip an eighth inch wide and then about a half inch uh, long. And I'm gonna just put a little dab of Zappa Gap or super glue right into the middle of the black. Do that very easily there. So that just helps hold everything in place when we get it on there. I'm gonna lay that foam right on top, start making a series of loose wraps, gradually increasing tension, okay? 
And now we've got that nice body there pinched right down in the middle, okay? So the body is now laid on and formed. Uh, we're gonna add some legs onto this now. And my favorite thing for doing the legs is uh, Sexy Floss from Montana Fly. Uh, they make it in a couple different diameters or thicknesses. Uh, this is the thin here that I have. And again, I've taken a couple pieces, uh, cut them to, you know, to a couple inches in length, have them side by side here. But what I'm gonna do now is take a half inch or so of those, trim that off, set the excess down on top of my vise there. I'm gonna lay these down about in the middle, catch those, and bring them right up onto the side here. Let's get this straightened out. Okay, got these pulled up to the side and you'll see that they're kind of sticking right out there. So we got a nice little buggy look on one side. Let's trim that to the other side. Again, gonna take about a half inch or so there. Put that onto the other side, catch that. And you don't have to put a lot of tension on these. Uh, if you just kind of go with half tension, it'll actually stick out a little better. You can see I've got nice, uh, nice leg profile on each side. And I'm just gonna put a little another pinch of dubbing on here for when we take the thread up front and tie it off. Don't need much, just covering the thread up a little bit. In fact, you probably don't have to do this, but I don't know, it just makes me feel uh, a little bit better, like we don't have any exposed thread anywhere with this. So I'm just gonna pinch the head up. Okay, then take that right up front. Do a couple whip finishes. Oop, let's pick that up out of the way there. There we go. Couple four turn or so whip finishes there. Everything's out of the way. Okay, we got that good there. Trim the thread. Then on each side, I'm gonna Trim a little bit of the excess legs sticking out. Try and even everything up on both sides. It's a little off. I don't think the fish care too much. Uh, so we've got that part of it done. And then the finishing part, just to strengthen everything up, I'm going to put a little bit of super glue or Zappa Gap right on the top of that crease there on each side and let that go down into the uh, where the legs are at. And there you've got the finished sandwich beetle. Uh, I've had some people comment, you know, does the square body on each end make a difference? You know, you could trim it round or put a little corner on it if you want to angle it, uh, if it makes you feel better. Believe me, the trout don't care, okay? But anyhow, that's a sandwich beetle. Uh, appreciate you watching and be sure to check out all the great videos on Mad River's YouTube channel. We think you'll enjoy them all. Have a great day and see you again soon.